the last 15 years have been a rather good period for uh, most developing countries. There has been very rapid convergence um, uh, in, 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 le in levels of um, living standards. Um, my main message will be that this is uh, rather unlikely to continue, that uh, growth in the developing and emerging markets uh, um, is hitting some very important structural uh, constraints. And so I'm going to be giving a much more, uh, let's say, moderate rather than optimistic uh, prognosis about uh, how much growth we can ex expect in, in the developing world in the next decade or two. Most of the uh, very rapid growth um, in the last few decades has happened through industrialization, a uh, very rapid movement of uh, workers from uh, rural areas into urban uh, areas, particularly manufacturing industry. Um, but the nature of manufacturing is changing, um, and th this is really putting a brake uh, on the rate at which uh, industrialization is possible uh, in countries that are um, just now beginning to industrialize. So uh, going forward, I think uh, it's going to be much more difficult to industrialize on the model that countries like South Korea and Taiwan or China or even a country like Vietnam recently uh, has been uh, able to achieve. Um, so, so my uh, expectation, therefore, is that um, this is going to limit how rapidly, um, let's say, countries in sub-Saharan Africa can catch up. What about Europe? The, the problems of the Eurozone have not been fundamentally addressed. Uh, so I expect uh, Europe to be um, in, in a very continued sluggish um, uh, performance over the years ahead. Um, my major worries, however, would be on the, in the political consequences of that. Uh, we've had um, uh, some indications of that already in the European Parliament elections. Um, and uh, in, in some sense, that was completely expected, uh, that the political backlash to the economic crisis and, and, the, um, and, and the loss of democratic legitimacy within the Eurozone. Um, I think that's probably the most uh, important uh, uh, adverse consequence of, of this crisis. If we compare the U.S. to Europe, I think definitely the U.S. did a little bit more of the right policies compared to, to Europe. Uh, but I think many people would argue that in fact there was room for even more stimulus uh, in, in the United States. But the United States is, is coming out of this and I think um, the United States for all of its political problems doesn't face the kind of, of, of structural problems that the Eurozone faces, which is that you need to build institutions anew which don't yet exist and that makes the problem in the Eurozone. Uh, that much harder compared to the U.S. Uh, but uh, what Europe needs is to um, to support the the integration of economic institutions with the building of a political community transnationally as well. Um, but that's not happening, uh, partly because it's not necessarily a popular thing. Um, that unfortunately leaves no other option but. Uh, um, uh, re-empowering the nation-states with some of their policy autonomy and that's uh, of course then would mean uh, you know going back on some of the uh, single um, market policies um, of, of the Union but you cannot have uh, an economic union uh, without a political union um, and that's ultimately the dilemma that uh, that Europe faces right now <laughs>